Welcome folks, day two of our visit to Dubai with Emirates Airlines. We are here at the Emirates Flight Training Academy. We're gonna do a little piece outside here and then we're gonna start our walk through meeting up with uh, Captain Abdullah and with Lee Nightingale, who we've talked about a lot. Finally, you're gonna to get to see him in the flesh and um, I'm gonna be flying a Cirrus. Uh, so really the question that we're asking today how does a young rookie pilot um, go about flying for the world's biggest airline? Uh, well, that's indeed right here at the Flight Training Academy, uh, designed as one of the most advanced pilot schooling and training facilities in the world. The Academy features cutting edge classroom technology combined with a modern fleet of training aircraft and full motion simulators. So I am on my way up to meet Captain Abdullah Al Hamadi. Uh, the whole project is divided into two parts, is the land side and the air side. The, the total uh, size of this uh, whole project is about uh, 1.3 million square uh, meters that's equivalent to about 200 uh, football pitch uh, if you look at the land side which we are on we got the academy here which has 36 uh, classrooms and then if you go to the other side where you can see the four buildings is the accommodation for the students each building can take 104 students 104 studios in each building so a total of 416 studios we have and then underneath that we have the gym, boxing, uh, a swimming pool, the jacuzzi, and then the uh, restaurant. And then we come toward the academy, which I'm going to show you the, the, the flight simulators. Their side is consists of uh, the control tower, the firefighting facilities. We have 1,800 meters um, runways, fully lighted. We operate at night. On one end we have the ILS, instrument landing system. On the other hand, we use the uh, GPS for practice landing. The uh, parallel taxiways, so that makes the runway occupancies uh, to the minimum, so we can utilize the, the runway to the maximum. We have about 20 parking bays, uh, all shaded with air condition to the aircraft and fully uh, full power. Next to that, we have the hangar, our MRO, where we can maintain all our uh, 27 aircraft currently. We have uh, 22 of the uh, Ceres SR22 and five of the Phenom, uh, Embraer Phenom 100 EV. We're gonna go and have a look at the uh, simulator capability. Those simulators are quite unique. Let's go and have a look at them. So we have three full motion simulator for the Phenom uh, 100 EV. On the right side, you have three full motion simulator for the Ceres. And this is uh, our flight instructor, who's so gonna take us on this right. Hi, Hi there. We are at uh, our field here. Yes. I'll start the engine for you. Parking brake is on. Okay. So this is EFTA airfield. This is EFTA airfield. Yes. And as we depart, you can see all the um, parking yes. canopies on the yes. other side. Okay. Go up. Good. That's a positive climb. We put the simulated gear up. Excellent. Get the power a little bit down to, uh, to maybe 70. As we fly over the runway, we get low. We cut the power and hold the nose straight. Look at the end of the runway. And now you can cut the power and start looking at the end of the runway. Just go down. Wow, that's excellent. You're just saying that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so. There are a couple of different phases in the training. In the Abbey Misho phase, up until the solo, we do not focus as much on the navigation phase. It's more pilot pitch navigation as they're routing to and from the training area. As they've now progressed past of their first progress test 
then that we introduce the navigation, the more data activity navigation. So it's all staggered and staged for them in yes. different phases of their training. I see. So in terms of a solo flight, when they go out there for the first time, when they're solo, is that uh, is that something that's uh, quite stressful for them, or are they are they generally always very confident because of the the level of training that they've had? Generally, they are very confident. I think it's us instructors we're a little bit more stressed out sometimes. But yeah. generally, the cadets, <laughs> you would find that they are very ready and excited for, for their, their first solo. First officer, Lee Nightingale, folks. Um, Lee, great to see you. With you, it was a, it was a different scenario where mm -hmm. you were you were um, flying with EasyJet That's on right. the short haul routes or? Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we were flying multi-sector days, sometimes two, sometimes four, out of London Gatwick. Um, and then when I moved to Lyon, it was slightly different because we were more centrally based in Europe, so we had some of the uh, shorter sectors from there. And then obviously transitioning here, where you move on to something completely different. Your wide body fleet, obviously amazing aircraft, amazing fleet here. Um, and obviously one day you can be flying San Francisco, Los Angeles, west coast of the US. A week later you might be off to Auckland. Um, and then uh, anywhere in between. So was it a very easy transition in terms of, of with Emirates uh, coming to the Emirates? And, yeah, and, yeah. And I mean, I was very lucky, obviously. My, my wife lives here and, and, and she, she spoke so highly of it. So um, for me, moving over here, flying long haul was something I'd always wanted to do. Um, and then when I came over, obviously saw the opportunity, um, saw the aircraft they have, the routes, the package, the lifestyle. And, and once you come over here, it's just incredible. Yeah, it is. It is kind of a no-brainer. I mean, to, to anybody who's who's out there in the same sort of scenario that you were in with on the short haul stuff, um, and 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 looking for a career change, uh, it's it, it it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Oh, for me, it does. I mean, like I say, I I'd always wanted to fly long haul. Um, I enjoyed my time at EasyJet. Had a great time there. Very good, really good training. Um, but moving from there, coming here, um, being based here, the lifestyle. As I mentioned, the package, the routes, the aircraft, yeah. the city itself, Dubai is incredibly safe. I mean, off the, the family love it. The outdoor lifestyle, we have high-end hotels, we have amazing beaches. Uh, on top of that, we have great medical care, international schools, the list goes on. Yeah, so for anybody who's considering bringing their, uh, their, their, their family here, it's, uh, it's something that you would, uh, you would highly recommend. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, we love it. We because the schooling's great as well as, as Emirates basically look after you. They do, they yeah. do. So we get accommodation, we uh, get an accommodation allowance, we get education allowance, medical, dental. Um, there's great uh, travel options for friends and family as well. Um, and so for us, yeah, we, we, we have um, a very nice school close to us, which we love. Um, and I know lots of different guys based in various different areas of Dubai and they speak so highly of the education. And you're looking, um, you're looking at your command uh, quite soon, aren't you? Fingers crossed, yeah. So hopefully um, within, I know at the moment Emirates, um, they're busy with upgrades, so in due course, um, yeah, I'll be looking to, to move to the left seat, so I'm very excited. That's fantastic. Well, we wish you all the best. And uh, thank you so much thank for you, taking Jerry. the time. We'll really appreciate you. This is the operations centre? Yes, everything comes to here. This is the heart of the whole operation. Wow. We are on the uh, air side now. This is the provision for another 12 uh, parking bays, which we're planning to, to have very soon. Currently, we have about 20 parking bays, all shaded. We have the power supply to the aircraft, we have the conditioning supply to the aircraft, and majority of them are ready to go. We have all these service uh, single engine on one side, the side. On the other side, we have majority of our uh, jet engine. And then, once they've completed the course, that is when they get the opportunity to move to the bigger stuff? Yes, then when they finish from here, they go to Emirates and they uh, join, currently they're joining the, the 777 courses. And of course the 777, as a pilot, you, you've got the option of flying both the freighter and the passenger jet. Absolutely, yes, we mix flying in between the freighter and the passenger jet. Yes. So what sort are you doing, Fetch and goes? Uh, he's in one circuit, that's why You're going to be doing a circuit? So when they go transition into 777 and, and the line operation is quite 
simpler. Cadets, they joined the, the Phenom for the IFR multi-engine. Yeah, so this specific cadet, he's on the last stage of the training. He's on the IFR. I see. The beginning of the IFR, yeah. I see. So how far has he got to go now? Sort of like... Uh... Um, it's now around 10 lessons more before the check ride. And then those guys are released for the MCC course and then to the um, uh, 777 course. The, uh, the academy is built based on supplying the demand of pilot shortage with an Emirates specially and then within the whole uh, area and the, uh, and the globe. And the projection for pilot shortage has always been there. We have about uh, over 600,000 pilots required over the next 20 years. And this is all down to the shortage of pilots, the global exactly, shortage of pilots. Exactly. If you look at the Middle East area, within the next 20 years, we require about 53,000 pilots. Really? Yes, but globally, we're looking at seven pilots every two hours. That's, that's the number we're looking at globally. But if you come to the Middle East, we're looking at one pilot every three and a half hours to cope with that demand. So when we looked at the number, and we've been forecasting the number for the last 15 years, and when you look back, the number is matching, whether it be from the uh, IKO forecast, uh, other big companies forecast, the numbers are very close. Yes. And I think that seven pilots every two, hour, every, uh, every two hours on the global base is quite scary. That's a huge demand. That's a huge demand. Well, I'm sure that you are doing your part to, uh, to improve that for Emirates and, um, and doing a great job by the looks of it. Your recruits seem to be very happy um, and your, uh, the students that we've seen, uh, they seem to be very happy indeed as well. So. Um, May it continue on, and next time we're here, we'll, we'll see even more infrastructure here. Hopefully. Thank you so much Thank for you your time, coming. sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much Thank indeed, you. Captain Thank Abdullah. You. All the very best.